Terry, what are the, I think, topics that's going to become a bit of a hot topic in the next few months is negative gearing. Obviously, um, we, we people don't understand negative gearing properly, I don't think, and it's a term that's thrown around. Um, obviously, what are your thoughts with potential changes to government policy if we have a change of government? Is that going to have an impact on the housing market to some extent? Uh, it will have an impact. Um, it will change. It doesn't have to be a super negative one, uh, no pun intended, um, but it will have an impact. It will change where people buy. I mean, if you're buying in Ballarat at the moment, and we're talking quite a lot about Ballarat, negative gearing becomes almost irrelevant because the rental yields are pretty strong there and, and um, you can you can buy there at a, at a, a f relatively low price and get a pretty good rental. So you're not actually losing money on that investment, so you're not necessarily looking for negative gearing benefits. Um, we use negative gearing a lot for our clients to give positive cash flow. So it enables them with the cash flow. With yeah. certainly the benefits of building new, we get to design the house that's using your research and talking with you to get the right I guess for the demographic of that area and I guess what the needs are for that area and the affordability of that area. Uh, and then with the depreciation on that house that you get when you do your tax, then obviously it kicks in and gives you that, that positive cash flow in, in holding that property. And for some we're seeing actually a fairly significant positive cash flow in that process. So, so. it's going to mean, just mean an adjustment in terms of where people buy and what people buy because what we're being told constantly by the potential future Labor government is that um, it's only going to, uh, the, the banning of negative gearing is only going to apply to existing properties. New properties will still attract uh, negative gearing benefits. So it's going to perhaps be an encouragement to people to buy or build new. Well, we've already seen that a little bit with the, with the changes already with the current government where they've removed depreciation on your, your plant and your fixtures and fittings on a property that's already been owned by somebody. So if, you mm. have a, if you're buying a property already owned by somebody else, you don't get to claim that even if there is life left in the depreciation yeah. on that, but which does have a little bit of an impact. But uh, certainly um, we don't think it's going to have a massive impact. Although I think, again, the media likes to say one thing and obviously promote doom and gloom. But it will have, as, as you said, some sort of impact. There are lots of different views being expressed because we, in our research effort every day, we're collecting everything we find from all sorts of different sources and there's lots of different views being expressed on um, whether it should happen or whether it shouldn't and if it does happen, what the impacts will be. Um, but I think um, it, uh, Bill Shorten himself says it's not going to force down the house of prices, um, price of houses, sorry. <laughs> Um, which begs the question, well, why, why are you yeah, doing it then? Because you're, you're, you're dressing it up as, as an improvement of affordability, helping first home buyers, but to do that, you've got to push down the, the price of houses. It's not going to have the desired impact that they're talking about. Do um, you think it'll have an, uh, an impact of increasing rents with people who in the It will in the biggest cities. We saw that last time. I mean, it's interesting and then in this debate, no one's referring to to the precedent, <laughs> the precedent. We already have a precedent. Yeah. He he scrapped it and then brought it back with rude yeah, haste. Nine months later, or something, yeah. Wasn't it? Within a year, he brought it back in because it had unforeseen consequences, particularly with forcing up rentals to the point that um, his own constituents were adversely impacted. And that will happen in Sydney, and Melbourne, because um, it's difficult to see how the numbers stack up in cities where you know rental yields are below three percent if you don't have negative gearing benefits to um, to compensate. So, yeah, we're going to see rentals rising. Okay, people cities. have to rent, people have to live somewhere, and if, if, you know, so in the days, it's just going to create that challenge. Yeah, so rents will rise, and they'll rise to the point where um, property investment becomes attractive again. That, that actually happened before this, the recent Sydney boom. What happened before prices started to rise is that rentals had risen mm. for a couple of years, and they were, rents were really strong and then um, people started to buy and so prices started to follow. So the, the relativity got a little bit out of whack. So there will be impacts, um, but they're not all necessarily negative ones. Um, the markets will adapt, but um, who knows what will happen. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the need for the scrapping of negative gearing, it was originally to, to take the sting out of those big city markets that were very expensive, but uh, they've stopped booming, so why do we need it? Mm.